Good evening on Saturday evening. I'm not going to detain you long today, but I'd just like to say a few words about one of my favourite saints and one of my favourite people in the early years of the church, St Athanasius. What an interesting name, Athanasius. It comes from the Greek, from athanatos, meaning immortal. Athanatos is a Greek word for death or dead. And if you put an A in front of it, it sort of negates it. So thanatos is what happens to mortal people, but athanatos means immortal. Now, Athanasius had a really good education. Uh, he was born in about 296, at uh, a time when the uh, world, uh, the ancient Near East and the Roman Empire was undergoing a great deal of change. And you may have heard of Emperor Constantine, well, Emperor Constantine, in the first quarter of the 4th century, decided to adopt Christianity as the official religion of the empire. And there was a really, really important council held at Nicaea to thrash out the tenets of the Christian faith. Now, at that time, there was a group of people uh, gathered around a thinker and theologian called Arius. And here we, we must say, boo because Arius doubted the full divinity of Jesus, because he said that as Jesus was born of a human being, Jesus could not be of the same, uh, the same could not be the same being um, but, uh, of God, because because he was born of a mortal person. Well, uh, that uh, didn't sit well with Athanasius, but he didn't have a voice at the Council of Nicaea. In 325 because at that stage he wasn't yet a bishop so he went with his bishop to the council bishop alexander of alexandria and basically briefed up his boss to put across the case that jesus is fully divine and athanasius made the response to Arius that there was never a time when the son was not Jesus, as God in human form, was intended right from the beginning of time. There was never a time when Jesus was not the Son of God. There was never a time when there was not the Son of God, but it had to come at a point in time for human beings to perceive that. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but it's really important uh, because this is what has been held in Christian doctrine ever since. Now, about three years after this council, uh, Athanasius succeeded Alexander as Bishop of Alexandria, but the people surrounding Arius were not good losers and they made his life really difficult and he was sent off into exile one or two times, but Athanasius didn't give up. Now, those of you who are my age, uh, maybe older, some of you who are younger, but who are familiar with the Book of Common Prayer, will be familiar with a text called Quinque Vult, basically, whoever wills. And those are the words that begin the Athanasian Creed. And there's a shorter version of that creed we can use sometimes in our worship today as an alternative to the Nicene Creed which is the creed we share every Sunday. Now, strictly speaking, the Nicene Creed is the Niceo Constantineapolitan Creed because the creed as agreed at the Council of Nicaea was further ratified at the Council of Constantinople in 381 and was given another stamp of approval at the Great Ecumenical Council of Chalcedon in 451, where the divine nature of Christ, of Jesus Christ, was affirmed. Really, really exciting times in the life of the church in many ways, uh, when doctrine and belief and what it meant was really being very hotly uh, debated. And it was around this time the Bible as we know it came into its present form. Uh, the books of the Old Testament were jumbled up slightly differently by the Christians, so the Old Testament in the Christian Bible ends with the prophecies, in the Hebrew Bible it ends with the histories, and it was decided that certain books that in what we now call the New Testament would make the cut and others wouldn't. So you've got the top four, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. 
and one that just missed it was the Gospel of Thomas, which is quite freely available. But it was considered that it was a bit too mysterious and gave a bit too much encouragement to people who are likely to go off and make up funny beliefs of their own, known as the Gnostics. Uh, Gnostics uh, refers to as a special kind of knowledge uh, from the Greek word gnosis, which means knowledge. So we may think that these things have been sort of handed down to us, that we recite uh, very solemnly every Sunday. But actually they were the work of a lot of extremely impassioned and passioned debate in the first few centuries of the church. And I thank God for that. So thank God for St Athanasius. Well, we look forward to tomorrow, which is the fourth Sunday of Easter, where our theme is Jesus as the Good Shepherd. And I look forward to your joining me uh, live from my study on YouTube and also on Facebook, if you will. So for now, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.